Now I'd like to formally introduce our Stand Up Revolution panel. Credit union membership is growing, but there's a lot of consolidation. Trade associations, co-op and PSCU, boutique credit unions, are they going away? What's happening? How do we revolutionize the way we think? Let's bring up our panelists to share more. First, Amber Harson. Brandon Michaels, 1AZ Credit Union. Fernando Zandona from Mambu. And Jamie Strayer, CU Strategic Planning. Video. Can everyone hear me now? Okay, great. Uh, first, I'm filling in as the moderator for uh, Steve, who unfortunately can't make it for us today. So we're all, all going to send some good w well wishes to him to get feeling better. Uh, and uh, today I've been asked to work with this esteemed panel on a question around revolution. And the question that we're going to answer today is not a small one. So get ready to put our thinking caps on, because this is going to be big. Uh, credit unions are known for representing all people. That's been our mantra for as long as credit unions have existed, right? We were created for the sake of helping those that were underserved or unbanked or didn't have access to traditional financial systems. And that hasn't really changed. But the world has indeed changed and how we've addressed that problem has changed and how we've worked through that problem has, has altered over the, time, over the years. So are there areas where we need to stand up and stir a revolution for credit unions to thrive, or maybe even just survive, that is different from what we have traditionally done to approach this problem. So I'm very excited to hear what everyone has to say on this particular topic. Uh, uh, I think I'll share a little thoughts for myself first. I think there's two areas for this for me. One deals with the heart of credit unions, and one deals with the head of credit unions. At the heart of credit unions for me, I'm going to put my DE cap on and I'm going to uh, jump on the coattails of Brandy here a little bit in talking about some of the societal issues that face our communities. Um, the income gap is growing in communities. Um, we are seeing more disparity in that front. I think credit unions are uniquely positioned to help serve those credit union members and help find financial equity within our own communities and the things that are important to our communities. Housing access is becoming a challenge. It's getting more and more expensive. Supply and demand are not really in alignment with one another. So how do we help families get into their first homes uh, from a credit union perspective? How do we deal with the things that cause bankruptcies? Bank that, co that costs all of us money at Credit Union Land, right? Like that's our biggest fear when we hand out a loan. Is is somebody gonna file bankruptcy? Well, one of the largest concerns or reasons that people file are going to be health-related issues. So how, as an industry, can we maybe impact healthcare, access to healthcare, how healthcare operates in this country to mitigate that risk for our members and then therefore ourselves as we move forward? So from the heart side, I, I'm super excited for us to dive into some of those topics together. I'm pretty sure a couple people share some of these opinions. And on the head side, then I think we get into technology. The revolution for the credit union, and, and Juan said this, he said, don't leave any small credit union behind. Right, that, that's kind of a mission for him. I also think that's true. As a technologist, we are leaving small credit unions behind. We're outpricing them. It is getting expensive for them to maintain technology. It's getting expensive for them to access technology. There is a misnomer, in my opinion, in a lot of technology companies' minds that small credit unions also don't know how to adopt technology and manage technology. And so they kind of leave them out in the dust. And with that, we leave those communities that those small credit unions serve out in the dark too. So I think if we're going to start some revolutions, those are the two places. I'm saying we need to, to worry about some socioeconomic issues and band together from a legislative perspective. And then second, we need to challenge our technology providers to ensure that we're being part of the solution of growing and strengthening our credit unions, not weakening them and cannibalizing our own basis. So <laughs> I'll turn that over <laughs> and ask you the same question. Where do we need to start a revolution? Wow. Um, 
can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, wow, how do I how do I even follow that? How do you even follow Brandy and you know all those types of things? I, you know, I I think that there's a lot. We talked to uh, Brandy talked a little bit about drugs. Um, you know, the, the the epidemic that's happening in our country. Um, you know, one of the drugs that I think credit unions have is overdraft, and um, w one of the things that I am passionate about is getting off of that drug in pursuit of what we're supposed to be doing as, as an organization and as an industry. And it's hard to do that. It, it is really hard to do that. Um, one of the panelists talked about, uh, you know, women and the, the woman that comes to mind. And for me, it was my, my grandmother and my mother who, who were CEOs as well, kind of breaking that glass ceiling back in the eighties. Um, and, and really, really proud of them. But, one of the reasons why they come to mind is because they also were breaking down a lot of the, the barriers to success at the time uh, back in the 80s and, and 90s that, that makes me proud uh, to be a part of their legacy. But there's, there's so many things that credit unions do so well. Um, but overdraft is a problem. It, it, I think that if you take overdraft away, um, that most credit unions would be unprofitable. And so how do you transition uh, away from that? And the thing that's scary to me is credit unions in large part, many of you are doing things exactly right. Um, but in large part, as an industry, um, we're missing the mark on consumers. And you know, we're, we're making them come to us and we're not going to where they are. We're trying to be all things to all people instead of choosing a strategy and going and going after it. Um, and, and that means that we're gonna you know, maybe irritate some people who have been with us for a long time. Uh, but this idea around not being strategic and, and just not uh, trying to, to you know, draw a line in the sand and go after them from a product perspective, go after them from uh, a strategic perspective is a challenge because we don't have the scale uh, that we need in order to, to serve everybody. Um, so that, that, that's a challenge. Um, the, the, other, the other aspect that I think is, is worthy of talking about is, uh, is technology. And I know that uh, you're going to talk about technology and you talked about technology. Um, but part of it is the technology menu that we're allowed or that we're able to buy in the credit union industry. It's outdated. It's legacy. It does not connect with one another. Um, and they, they are all friends of the industry but um, it, it's outdated. And so we're, we're stuck with the, the technology that we have. And it's time for us to put pressure on them because they, in and of themselves, are making us become irrelevant uh, as an industry because they're not able to do the things that our consumers demand. Fernando, you're up. Thank you, thank you folks. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm new to credit unions. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you, thank you for being welcome and included. Uh, my, well, that's not re really true. I started with credit unions in 2006 when I moved out from Sao Paulo, Brazil to the United States. I was working for Microsoft and Microsoft relocated me to, to the Redmond, Seattle area. And as part of the relocation, I got a relocation specialist who took me to a credit union to open my first bank account uh, in the United <laughs> States. That was 2006. Uh, I moved with my daughter, she was four years old at the time, uh, while well she grew up. High school got a time for us to open a banking account for her, and we went to our credit union to open that bank account. So since then we've been doing our daily banking with credit unions. Uh, I'm now moved out of the United States, I'm living now in, in the Netherlands in Amsterdam because of Mambu, the company that I'm the CEO for. But I keep my credit union account here <laughs> for all my U.S. daily banking needs. Uh, so, so this is my relationship with all of you, right? By being on the, going to the branch, being offered a, co a cup of coffee, sitting on a, on a desk, um, and be able to have a, a friendly conversation with one, and even like, how can I open a bank account to my daughter? How we can help her build her credit score and so on. So, like, like that is part of what I see here, uh, being sitting here in front of you, and then the the feeling, the warmth that goes from this crowd here. So thank you, thank you for having me as a member. Thank you for having me as, as uh, a part of this, this family here. 
so let's talk about technology, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm the CEO for a company called Mambu. Um, we are a core banking provider out of the cloud. So all the, all the names and, and the, the, the hype over there, like we could put all of that below my, 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 my product, right? Cloud native, uh, we partner with AWS. Before coming to Mambu, I was with AWS for 10 years, so I saw the modernization that banks were going through as, as part of that. Uh, I, I built scalable services. I built all of that that you probably hear about. And all of a sudden, I ended up at Mambu offering services for financial institu institutions. Uh, and I get to see a lot of what financial institutions are going through uh, as part of this, this role. Uh, I'm new to it as well, so I've been in the company for a little over one and a half years now. Uh, but I had a chance to travel around and, and talk to each one of our customers and prospects. And we see a lot of that. And at Mambu, we believe that we can change the world for better through financial services. And we, we believe that we can bring that inclusion back. We can, we can bring that, you know, when we talk about the price point, we can bring all that and, and change the world for better through, through um, our products and our, and our services. I have seen customers that start with us really small, and today they have like 15 million end customers, right? And, and I was talking to, to, that, to that bank, and um, we were seeing a spike in usage at the end of the month, and they offer a buy now, pay later solution. And I was like, why that spike? And they said, well, our customers, my, our, our users, they run out of money at the end of the month. So they use us more, so they can able to, to you know, the, the end of month grocery purchase. And like that was making me feel like so proud of what we do, right? Like this is why we are here to do that, right? To be able to do that. And, and we have a, a range of, of use cases across the globe. We, we are in 65 countries today. So we see a lot of that. My, my closest relationship with credit units is in Canada. Uh, with Leak Data. Leak Data is a CUSO who offers services to 40, over 40 credit unions uh, in the Atlantic Canada, and they are migrating from their, uh, if I may call legacy core, to, to Mambu. So we, I'm closer to that when we ask about, you know, the woman who got me uh, closer or to, to credit unions was Carrie, uh, uh, Leak Data CEO. Like, she's such a mentor in terms of credit unions and how how this environment works, right? Like, so we are very really close partners with them uh, and, and I'm learning a lot. So like, I'm here to learn and I'm not gonna be here in the next two days and then uh, please stop by, let me know how you can help. Uh, we, we have a product that brings simplicity and, and allows you to move faster uh, for your customers. And we want to be partners and not, not vendors, right? Like, uh, uh, let me know how I can help and I believe that we can do a lot together uh, 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 if we put our minds into it uh, and, and I'm here to help. Thank you so much. How about for you, where should a revolution begin, our next revolution in credit union movement begin? I've always loved a revolution in credit unions. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, credit unions are revolutionary. And there are a lot of areas where we are impacted by spin and where we have our own echo chamber called confirmation bias. I really love the statistics that Brandy provided and I'm looking at my friend Max here from um, Raya's Credit Union, yeah. right? <laughs> so Raya's Credit Union appeared in a show recently called Opportunity Knox and thank you for those of you nodding, right? Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's a PBS television series that is all about credit unions, but it's not all about credit unions, and it speaks to what Michael, um, uh, Brandon <laughs> Michaels was saying about having financial wellness at the center of all we do. 60% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. 40% are living on survival budgets, yet are Financial education tells people you need to save. Cut out that Starbucks. They're not having that Starbucks. They're living on survival budgets, 40%. And those people, our credit union members, some are, some aren't, do not trust institutions. They do not trust institutions. When you look at our websites, 
it's not solution focused as Brandon was sharing. It's home equity loan, refinance. Are we speaking to them? Because what they really need to know is how do I pay less on my credit cards, which is a personal loan as debt consolidation, right? How do I save money on my car loan? That's auto refi. Are we speaking to those people? And at CU Strategic Planning, which I am just honored by my business partners there. I started at my kitchen table, and now they've done $945 million in CDFI grants. You go, girl. <laughs> no, really, really, it's then because I've just been making PBS shows for the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. When we started, credit unions thought that CDFI was only for very marginalized communities, but let's face it, credit unions were the first community development financial institutions before the CDFI fund was ever created, right? Yet, consumer satisfaction with credit unions right now is below banks. We are all looking at each other with our white hat, using that language that's really outdated, thinking that we're just right, uh, consumers know it. Well, guess what? We are doing the loans. How many of you do um, character-based lending without credit score? A lot of you do. It's okay to be shy right now. But how many of you do loans below 640 credit score? I'm seeing a lot, right? I know Max does. Rise Credit Union saved a woman's home from foreclosure in this PBS television series, right? So we did the show because while we credit unions are speaking to ourselves, consumers just don't know it, and that's why they're not satisfied with us, right? And they're hearing this spin from the banks and everyone else how we're addicted to this drug of overdraft protection. We must not care about them. We're just institutions. How are we different from banks? And banks, neobanks like Chime, they have greater deposit growth than we are. Actually, they have greater deposits than we do because they don't charge overdraft. We've got fintech breathing down our necks and we are poised to be the blockbuster with Netflix coming in. So are you gonna wait until it's regulated or are you gonna put financial wellness at the center of what you're doing? Are you gonna wait for Netflix to come and put us out of business as the blockbuster stores close because we're waiting for regulation? Are we gonna look for ways to put financial wellness at the center of everything we do? Is your financial education department fighting for the budget with your marketing department, with your business development department, right? Why aren't we doing everything with financial wellness at the center which can which leads people to save more money on your auto loan. Let's get rid of the financial education of save more money. You're not spending your money wisely. That's in our mind. That's not in consumers' mind. That's telling them we are not for you. So I'm very excited that this week, if you want to talk to me, I'm starting a QSO with Gene Chotsky from the Today Show. And we are creating holistic financial wellness across financial education, across marketing, and across business development because financial wellness should be producing the ROI, not just for consumers, but for credit unions. I'd like to propose a public watch party for the PBS series too. <laughs> a virtual watch party for all of us. That's amazing. Anybody have any additional final thoughts they want to add in? Jane said it all. She did. I, thank you for starting that QSO. I think that's a, an amazing endeavor. So how I think for all of us, we're, we're happy to support and see how we can help. You know, it makes sense because right now with our margins going lower, anything we can do on the investment side rather than the expense side, even pre-buying solutions by investing in the QSOs, it also hits us with increasing our other income to get off that drug. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.